Hey there folks, uh, so just a quickie for you tonight, not gonna do a full backlight kit install or anything like that, especially since I've already done a backlight kit install video on this specific kit. Uh, so this is the um, 720 by 480 OSD one chip backlight kit, whatever the hell you wanna call it, whatever the hell they ended up calling it. Um, this was sent my way because it wasn't working um, and well, I mean, I guess that's not that notable in and of itself, but I got it working. Um, but the reason it wasn't working, I think, is notable. Um, so let's take a look here. Uh, so as you can see, it's working totally fine. Uh, this is one of those newer backlight kits where um, it is still just an aftermarket screen and there is a converter board in here, but they've started throwing these uh, shieldings over the back. So it's just the ribbon cable poking out. Um, the idea is that it's, you know, it looks more like a finished unit. It's a lot easier to just slip into the console, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the problem is if something goes wrong, it's a lot more difficult to troubleshoot because there's, there, there's not a lot to it visibly. Uh, anyway, the problem was that it did not work. Uh, and I believe I'll try and reproduce that. Um, I noted in my video that one thing I didn't like about these things was that if the ribbon was stuck down to the screen lens, which is extremely easy to do, um, it makes handling these things kind of weird because the ribbon could be stuck at a weird angle or something like that and peeling it up, you know, once it releases, you, there, there could be a, a, a shifting of the parts and you know you accidentally pull it against the sharp metal edges of the shielding and there goes your ribbon something like that um but anyway the problem was in this case i believe that the ribbon was just pushed too far into the screen um of course i can't reproduce that uh but what had happened was the ribbon was pushed in i think and because of how it was pushed in it managed to disconnect something. Now, of course, I can't reproduce it because why would I be able to reproduce it on camera? That would just make things too simple. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this shielding. It is held on with these little metal clips here on each of the sides. There's three on the top, two on each side, and then three on the bottom. Uh, but releasing it is pretty easy. It's not on there too tight, you can see nice and loosey-goosey uh, but you can really just lift at each of the corners if you jam a fingernail in there it's really not too big of an issue to get up um, do all four corners and there should be enough loose in there to release it and then you can see whoop, then you can see a pretty standard looking uh, conversion board for mods like this if you've seen any of the older mods you've seen this one Herein lies the problem. This board is held to this LCD with this little bit of tape up in the top left corner. That's it. So when I pressed up on this ribbon, it actually pushed the entire board up and rotated it around this piece of tape. So this tape was acting as a pivot and it rotated the entire board. You can see there's a little bit of a crease in the ribbon where this has happened multiple times. Um, as I push it up more, you can see that crease gets a little bit bigger and so on. Anyway, this had happened enough that the screen, and of course I didn't capture this on a video, but um, the screen ribbon had shifted in the connector, something like that. And with this thing closed, there was no way to tell that. It just looked like a bad install. Uh, now, the first hint might have been, and I wasn't paying enough attention to even tell you if it was like this, but looking at it now, I can see that this ribbon is not in there straight. Um, so that would be a hint that something like that would have happened. And if we plug this in and try it out now, this is how it was. Um, it just, it's dead. Like there's no, no signs of life, no backlight, no nothing. The Game Boy's on, the Game Boy works totally fine. And I just showed you the screen kit does work when it's assembled correctly. Um, so if you 
if this happens to you, um, the easiest solution is to just pop this shielding off and make sure that that cable is connected properly. So in my case, I just gotta release that latch, reseat the screen, close the latch, and my cable is not in there perfectly straight, but when it is in there perfectly straight, that little white line should be uh, adjacent, directly adjacent to the brown bale there. Um, this is probably good enough, so I'm not too worried about it, but just flip that up and try it again. Just to show you if I can get it up. There we go. If you've played with any of the other backlight kits, or even the Game Boy Advance version of this, you're familiar with this exact converter board already. And probably even this screen. Okay, so it's not exactly adjacent, but it is pretty darn close. But either way, now we can see... Try it out. Ta-da! And it's working again. That's it. Um, so yeah, a little unfortunate. Um, I think they could have avoided this stupid little, um, I don't even want to say it's an oversight. It's a, it's a very interesting failure mechanism because like, how do you plan for something like that? Um, I think they could have planned for this failure mechanism or at least avoided it by using more than one piece of tape in the corner. Like if they just drop another piece of tape right here, or even just use like double-sided adhesive, double adhesive all along the back here, then it won't just pivot around like that. Uh, but then again, that could introduce some other problem that I'm not thinking about right now. Um, so either way, simple problem, simple solution. And because someone had asked, and I may have given the wrong answer before, the Back of the shielding is insulated, so it's not going to short on anything. There's this this foam tape on there. Um, someone had asked, and I said, well, yeah, it is just metal, so if it does come up. But I was mistaken. I didn't realize it was insulated. But anyway, it's that simple. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, personally, I think if your kit arrives and, you know, you test it out and it doesn't work, you know, Contact the seller first and foremost before you start te tearing something apart. Um, but if you feel comfortable doing this, um, you know, mention it to them with their permission. Um, go ahead and pop it apart and, and test it out. Uh, I personally think that's easier than packing this darn thing up and shipping it back for an exchange. But, you know, um, I'm also a little bit more comfortable with the electronics getting in there. Uh, but anyway, I guess that is one of the uh, growing pains for switching to this style kit, where everything is hidden behind this um, shielding there. But it is what it is. Now you know. Now I know. And um, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.